hoisting the sails for St. Martin from Bermuda. We preemptively set the whisker pole for anticipated uh, northeasterly winds. Fred can you center the trapper? Maybe even drop it down. And now we're getting ready to exit St. George's Harbor through the town cut into the Atlantic Ocean. It was around here that I started wishing that I had a scopolamine patch. I had taken meclizine, but it was grossly ineffective. The swell that we're suffering with right now is the result of a pretty intense low pressure system that had been over Bermuda over the past 24 hours. In fact, we had uh, delayed our departure by about six hours in hopes that the swell would dissipate. Can we tighten up that line? Just hand tight. It doesn't need to be winched or anything like that. The seas are extraordinarily sloppy. I've spent the last two hours trying not to throw up. And Fred here was kind enough to give me a scopolamine patch. <laughs> Saved the day. He gave up three of his patches. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So, but 15 foot waves and an extreme rolly. And the bad part is the twisting. I think the twisting is what really gets me. Yeah, it's cork corkscrewing. It's like being on a tilt a whirl, and the ride just never ends. But I'm telling you the. <laughs> Help. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, it's getting better with the scopolamine, okay. but I'm so glad I didn't have that Jamaican chicken sandwich for lunch. <laughs> there we go. Just big, big rollers. And you really have no appreciation on the camera, I don't think. There's a big one coming. This will just, generally, we just roll right over these things. White caps are coming up now. Wind is getting a little stronger. Broad reach. One reef in the main. Whisker pole out. Day one sunset. Still incredibly rolly. This is here on the leeward side of the boat.
so if I have these attached, what I often do is loop. or whatever else you track um, and then so people end up you know, holding it and dragging it along um, but we found that uh, it wants you to put back through this is going to be up off the deck you're kind of and you're able to hands free spots. now you have, not now you have both your hands you're not carrying too. this as much here uh, It's almost dinner time, but I'm ready for bed. But this uh, berth is actually very comfortable. There's a lee cloth right here. That'll keep me from falling out. And I think you can probably see Vivian in the kitchen getting stuff ready for everybody else. It's a delicious sounding rice meal, but I am not ready for that just yet. Absolutely beautiful evening. This is our second evening at sail. Uh, to summarize, during the first 24 hours we went 133 miles. Wind was predominantly off the beam. We took down the whisker pole and set the Genoa. And now we've just been uh, cruising along at about seven knots in, uh, in much calmer seas than yesterday. We still have a Sort of a long period thick roll from that storm that came through Bermuda a couple days ago but it's looking real nice right now it's going to be great sleeping tonight and we are observing another spectacular sunset Son. 
sunset. Jeez. <laughs> it is a great sunset. The best. Captain's Hour. Is that the latest and greatest GoPro? Uh, GoPro oh, 10. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> so yeah, she has a little um, DJI action cam. It's like basically the same camera that was on the drone. Uh, but it's really nice. I mean, it shoots in 4K and it's mm -hmm. tiny and it doesn't have that fisheye quality that like the earlier GoPros had. We are about 250 miles into the trip. It's amazing that the people out here, uh, all the major swell is going. It's pretty, pretty comfortable actually. And we've only seen one container ship this whole time. No other sailboat, no nothing. It's been just us out here. Wind speed is about 10 knots and um, we're just So the issue we're facing here is that ideally you want to get as much easting as you can on your initial leg such that you can catch the trade winds and ride them into the islands. In our case the wind direction is slowly clocking towards the uh, southeast such that we're going to have to beat into the wind for most of the trip. lost. We're just figuring out where we are. And where the Bermuda Triangle is. <laughs> yeah. Or the vortex to suck us. <laughs> the vor vortex, yep. And 61. Good afternoon. We just hit our noon point, so we're 48 hours into this trip. We've gone 200 and Today has been very pleasant. Uh, real nice 
baby race wins. They were getting ready for lunch. Well, finishing up day two at sea. And I guess I'll show you the inside of Nathan and Vivian's boat. This is the V berth, and this is where they, they live. And there's a, a bathroom right there. This is the sort of the main salon here. It's the widest area. And uh, that's where Alex sleeps. There's also a pilot berth up there, but that's pretty narrow. And this is where I sleep. And then there's a pilot berth up there, but again, narrow. Just keep our stuff up there. And coming back, he's got a real nice nav station. There's another berth right here. Nice functional galley. And this is kind of cool. This is a companionway that leads up to the middle of the boat. So you actually have two ways up top. You have this one, and then you have this one. And there's one last bed right there. Near the back of have a uh, look what I think is a woodpecker we've got a, somebody holding a beer we've got a snapping turtle we've got a sleigh and we have the starship enterprise I see an Alex <laughs> you see a what oh. Alex. 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 Yep, there he is oh there's the hang ten hang or the hang, hang five hang five sign yeah we got that too these are like amazing cloud formations <laughs> it's cat it's captain's hour oh and there's a squall <laughs> oh shit! Wait, we didn't do Captain's Hour questions.
this morning it was rough, rougher seas, but great wind. And then all day, pretty much, we've had 15 knot winds with uh, with the conditions you see here, which is, but overall, extraordinarily pleasant out here. Amazing temperature, um, you know, obviously beautiful views, and then um, just a nice, real nice, uh, real nice ride. Nothing, nothing super stressful or anything like that. Vivian is correct. As you can see here, we're beating up into the wind and waves trying to maintain that east position. Currently, we're directly north of St. Martin, but quite a ways away. So this is our last Doctor. jug of water, Doctor. and we have to preserve That's right. it. That's right. I feel like I got a system now. Yeah, it's getting me wet. <laughs> the system is getting wet. We'll call wet that a success. Wet. Awesome. I'll take this. Oh. Awesome. Oh, you just turned it. Oh, you, is it on? I don't know what I did. It's on. Nope. I can't tell. So, Bermuda up here, and these are our waypoints, and we're desperately just trying to go east, and the winds have shifted, and we're sort of right dead north of St. Martin, so if the forecast is correct, we should be able to hit St. Martin directly without having to tack. We've been on this point of sail the whole time. Uh, the trade winds now, so they're coming out of the east, and uh, we're going six to seven knots through the water. The sea state is kind of confused and you know lumpy, but we're all used to it at this point. No seasickness left, and uh, we've got a uh, fishing line out that just caught a mahi mahi.
Hold on. Oh, hold on. It's right in there. So this vodka trick seems to be a pretty good way to put the fish directly to sleep. He'll be completely still after that. Sorry, buddy. Oh my gosh, good there picture. Go. Nice. <laughs> it's a beast. I can't even get it all in the frame. Get the picture. Yep, we're set. Mahi-mahi. Uh, we are well into the trade winds, headed due south, and uh, we've got about 250 miles to go, which means that we will arrive Wednesday morning. And on Wednesday morning, the trade winds will be piping up to 25 to 30 knots, which should be fun. And um, then we go right into Marigot Bay of the uh, island of St. Martin. Views and uh, weather out here have been fantastic. The air is super clean. I have not had to blow my nose this entire trip, which is unusual because I have allergies. And uh, in total, I think we've seen three tanker ships, nothing closer than like six miles. So real, real no, no close encounters at all. And we've got the AIS system that lets us know when they're, when they're within 24 miles actually. So, let's see how we're doing on this mahi. from the heat is to come inside where it's a little hotter because all the windows are shut but we have a fan that's all I got hey Vivian what you cooking we just made <laughs> fresh mahi tacos mahi tacos huh uh, they're gonna be mahi are you guys fresh. having trouble standing up straight <laughs> Cooking in heels. <laughs> cooking in heels. Holy moly, look at all that. Shazam. Any poached fish. Poached? Yeah. Just like the poached eggs. Like boiling? No, not boiled. It's like a saute without oil. Cheers, Nathan. Cheers, Nathan. Let's <laughs> <laughs> uh, see how this one goes. I know how to tackle them.
this fucking squall on the head, so Nathan would like to tie in a third reef. So you can see it gets a little unsteady on deck. So the guys are tied in. And this particular boat has uh, reefing lines and main halyard that uh, require you to go forward. get everything in ship shape while trying not to fall off the boat. Well, we obviously survived the night. That squall line and a few others throughout the night. Peak gusts were up to around 34 knots during one of the night watches. But all was well and it was a result of a well laid out sail plan. So then it was time to do what we usually do during the day and lay down and take a little nap. So here's the AIS system and you can see we've got a bogey right there, it's called the Hellesport Promise and if you click on it, it shows us the closest point and we're a half a mile and that's going to happen in 59 minutes and if you click on this, we'll tell you about it, it's a tanker and that tanker is 228 meters long and speed over ground is 13 knots Excellent. so we'll be contacting him 
paper chart that we used is right here, and up at the very top and just off the paper's edge is the Bermuda. So that's our first day. And we just did noon plotting throughout the course of the trip. It's, we just completed our best day, which was a hundred and I think it was 154 that he just said. Here's where we're headed. Well, here's where we are right now, just past the uh, the trench, and we are headed right here to St. Martin. So I think the plan is we come down here, head east or head west, and then east into the St. Martin Marigot Bay. And the chart for that bay is on the electronic plotter and it's very nine miles away. So this is our last day out in the ocean. We have um, about, it's about 70 miles to go. So our projection is to arrive around midnight. So we're just going nice and slow out here and then we'll arrive sometime in the morning. Uh, probably around that 6 a.m. hour. Overall, it's been a pretty damn good trip. Um, you definitely do get used to being out in the middle of the ocean. And, you know, once you're out here for a while, there's not a lot to look at but, but the wind and waves. And those definitely do change from uh, time to time. We've had some steep ones that were, you know, 15, 20 feet high. And we've had uh, some waves that, you know, just like today, which has just been sort of slow and meandering. The worst is when it's sort of that angry undulating sea and it causes the boat to pitch and roll and corkscrew and that definitely makes you seasick but now that I've been out here for eight days I don't I don't feel seasick at all I mean, it's just gone it's just part of the regular motion um, people on the boat have been fun the uh, the hosts Nathan and Vivian have been fantastic um, caught that mahi mahi yesterday so we're gonna finish that up today with uh, I think it's mahi mahi tacos or something um, yeah, so it should be fun this is definitely worthwhile definitely eye-opening to see what it's like out here um, you know as far as sailing is concerned it's it is pretty straightforward I mean you're just either you know furling in for high winds or furling out for light winds um, you can see we have a a triple reef in the main or maybe you can't see it but we actually did that the other day because we had a that big long that squall line which was pretty frightening and it was associated with some pretty big waves uh nothing breaking but we, the boat again just goes right you know right over top of everything it's not a big deal at all um and as long as your sail plan is appropriate for the amount of wind that you're about to hit it's not not really stressful i mean we just kind of sat up in the cockpit and watched everything go by and uh, you know we get a few splashes in the cockpit but not otherwise you know not a not a huge big deal I think uh, the thing that takes the most getting used to is just the motion inside the boat because it's so unpredictable I mean you could be you know hanging on one minute and you let go just for a second and the boat will not just tilt but it'll lurch in the opposite direction and you know put you on the other side of the boat and I've got a few bruises to uh, to show for that. Um, sleeping is amazing. I mean, you, you can't sleep any better than you can on a, on a rocky rolly boat that you're just, just being uh, you know, rocked to sleep every night. And the sound of the water along the hull is, is very relaxing. As far as me wanting to do this myself, I definitely have more to learn. Um, 
you know, if everything's easy and straightforward and, you know, the weather isn't too bad, then, yeah, no problem. You know, the, the, the wind vane, the autopilot, set it, forget it. You know, as long as everything works, you're in great shape. The uh, challenge is dealing with equipment failures and heavy weather, heavier weather, if the uh, weather forecast is not, uh, is not accurate. And, um, we will be in St. Martin tomorrow. Take care. All right, here we are, last night, last sunset of the trip. We're in day seven, heading into day eight. Uh, just a bunch of rollers out here right now. Winds 15, just from the, from the uh, port quarter here. And uh, yeah, just very pleasant conditions, perfect temperature, but just big old rollers that we're catching here from the, uh, from the, from the side here, that's rolling us around. It's supposed to pipe up to like 25 knots tonight, so that could be interesting as we, as we make uh, landfall early in the morning. Yeah, these things are definitely getting big. Definitely getting big. Ooh. And after a relatively sleepless night of getting tossed and turned in my bunk due to the rolly seas, we arrive in Margot Bay, St. Martin, just before daybreak. And we drop the anchor. but it's from New Mexico where me and Nathan met. I always try to buy it for landfalls. All right, cheers. Salute. Cheers. 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 Happy landfall, guys. Yep. Yeah. Happy landfall. Yeah. Boom. Happy trails. Yep. Cheers. And we touch glasses with a group of new friends. What a trip. <laughs>